what our filter ends up being by default is what can I get done and when can I get it done? So the payoff we get is feeling productive, but the cost is feeling truly fulfilled. Welcome to season two of Leadership Impact, the podcast for modern executives who are reinventing leadership within their organizations. With your host, executive leadership coach and CEO of the Granger Network, Carrie Granger, and me, Paul Adams, CEO of Sound Financial Group. This season focuses on accountability and to support you in increasing accountability in yourself and in those you lead, we're providing a special rate for our listeners who want to engage in one of our accountability courses. Text the word accountability to 555-888 for more information. This is episode 19. Getting things done isn't accountability. Welcome back to Leadership Impact. Today, we're going to talk about why getting things done is not being accountable. Say what? That's what I was going to say. What? What? Heck yeah. I meet so many people, Paul. They're just getting shit done. You know, it's like the next task, the next email, the next text. Is Their head's down. They're going forward. They are massive producers. And in the end, they've lost sight of their leadership impact. Well, and it's like, how much is it a badge of honor for people just to be busy? Mm -hmm. So how are things? Oh, we're super busy right now. We've got this going on, that going on. And they're never pausing long enough to maybe, are they doing the right thing or even producing the outcomes that they want? Like, what are the outcomes? Yes. What are the outcomes? And that's what we often lose sight of is... I'm going to this meeting, the next meeting, the other meeting, and I don't even know what the outcomes are for. What am I trying to accomplish in this meeting? Well, or they're just doing it because that's what everybody does at this company is we go to these meetings, or my boss told me to, or with a, and not even an attempt to understand what the outcome is that anybody's trying to produce. You know, I was with a group, a leadership group, maybe two weeks ago, and they were going to redesign this meeting and it was some funny acronym, you know, the SW uh, LT meeting or something, right? And I said, well, what's the SWLT meeting about? You know, what's, what are you trying to accomplish in that meeting? And they all looked at each other, 20 of them, they looked at each other and they had no idea. And they'd been doing this monthly for a really long time. And then one person said, well, I think it's about risk mitigation. And the other person said, well, I think it's actually about innovation. <laughs> I'm like, well, those are kind of two different things, right? Oh my that one, gosh. Uh, yeah. One hour meeting. They really didn't know. So it's like, we go to these meetings. Now, I actually have to say, you know, I have to pat them on the back really, because they knew this meeting wasn't productive and they really knew they needed to redesign it and they weren't just letting it continue. But what was alarming even to them is they didn't they weren't even aligned on what the outcome was. So they were getting the meeting done. They were taking time. They were doing things, but they weren't being accountable to an outcome. Which just pause right there. 24 senior leaders of any company mm -hmm. just collect, forget what other work items come out of it that probably waste time. But a one hour meeting once a month like that is a significant impact to shareholder value. Hence why these companies engage the Granger Network. Well, thank you for that little advertisement, Paul. Yeah. They, well, yes. w without that critical question being asked, no one knows. And I, I'm even thinking about the regular meetings that we have just inside my company right now that I think our next quarterly session, what I'm going to do for fun is have everybody write down what they think at each of our regularly scheduled meetings are. And then we have to go around and say what we all think the outcome is that we're after. Yeah. In fact, you know, after we had that conversation and I got to tell you, these guys are actually quite amazing, right? Because who's willing to say that yeah. in front of all their peers, like who's willing to be that leader to say, I don't know, but, and they're saying, I don't know a little bit vulnerability there. Everybody else said, yeah, I don't know. Right. And so after, but after that conversation, one of the things that we all took on is writing out the outcomes of each of our regularly scheduled meetings. You know, mm. what is it for? And that's something that I've taken on as well is inside the Granger Network, you know, starting a meeting with the outcome of the meeting. And I'm about 50% at this point 
you know, remembering to do that, because I think if you do that, it orients people. Oh, yeah, that's what we're accomplishing today. We're not just doing agenda items, getting stuff done. We're actually trying to accomplish a future state here. There's a reason for this. It it has us get down the path of what we're trying to, where we're trying to get to together as a team. That's so good. Calendar's another, Paul. What is your, you know, what does our typical calendar look like? It is literally a bunch of tasks. Meet with Carrie. Meet with Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Meeting with Joe, potential customer. Mm -hmm. All day. (laughs) Right. And if you're really advanced, you might even have in there things you have to do, like finish the proposal for the investment group or accomplish our 2019 mid-year review or do a performance evaluation. So you may even have, you know, non-meeting, but just tasks you have to get done. Again, tasks, right? Without for the sake of what? Mm -hmm. And if you're not, at least most of us have this really long list of to-dos. And how productive do we feel when we get those to-dos done? We feel highly productive. In actuality, coin toss. Coin toss, exactly. Because, you know, for me, the ones that I don't do are the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. Right? I always check off the ones, oh, yeah, that feels great. That feels great. I do the emails like that, too. You know, I save the long responses. And, boy, I just hits, you know, let me plow through the email. So all of that. And at the end of the day, what can I say? I got a lot of stuff done. I can't tell you the outcomes I produced. I can't tell you if I'm any closer to what I committed to accomplishing this year on our team, in our company, with a client. So that's why we say getting things done is not the same as being accountable to outcomes. Well, I I just need to drive home the point again about how indoctrinated everybody is on the getting the next thing done. Like we've all heard the quote by Mark Twain. If your job, if it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if your job is to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest frog first. And it's like to, to that point of do the hardest job first thing, Mm. Mm -hmm. but it's still do the hardest task first. Mm -hmm. It's still not an outcome oriented way to do it. You know, one of the courses that we lead, and it's actually one of the few public courses that we lead. So uh, this is a little bit of a, a, a uh, ad here, but let me tell you why, right? So one of the courses we lead is um, a productivity and accomplishment course. And it's all about not just being productive, but accomplishing. And it's based on the mission control technology and you know we're a licensee of theirs. And one of the main teaching points in there is how to use your calendar really as a palette to create your life or from the business sense, a palette to create the future of your company and fulfill on that. So in our calendar items, we actually have the outcome of what we're accomplishing. Like it doesn't just say, for example, you know, if I were to create a podcast recording with Paul, If I were to create that in my calendar, it wouldn't just be podcast recording with Paul. It would be making a leadership impact accessible to anyone. Record podcast with Paul. So when I get on this session with you, I'm not just thinking, oh my God, I have to record this. I'm thinking, all right, I'm making the capacity to make a difference through one's leadership accessible to anyone. So I'm really oriented towards that outcome. I don't just have, you know, I've, I've uh, said before, I've, I've become a client of, your, of yours. And so I don't just have meeting with Paul and Sound Financial Group. What I have is creating my financial future or mm. uh, creating a, a life of freedom, you know, meeting with Paul. And so in that course, you start to learn how to redesign what you're spending your time on so as to ensure you're always accomplishing those outcomes related to the ultimate, you know, future state. And so when, when people aren't relating to things as an outcome, because I think as people hear this inside the cultural common sense, it can be kind of easy for them to be like, well, I think I do that. I think I'm thinking of that. 
But what are the symptoms that occur for people just in their own personal lives when they're operating for themselves and with others without outcomes? But they're just GSD, getting stuff done all day, knocking off things off their checklist all day, satisfying their boss's requests all day, but they're not doing it from outcomes. They're stressed and or tired. Exhausted. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. yeah. Exhausted. It never stops. So you got more. As soon as you get it done, the next batch comes in. Can't quite get on top of it all. You lose sight of the difference you're making, so it's less meaningful. Mm. Annoyance. I, it would dis like, like it, you'd be disempowered, but you'd mm -hmm. almost get, be getting annoyed at everything mm -hmm. around you then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you got so much to do, you can't even handle it. Another part of this productivity and accomplishment uh, workshop, which I do suggest everybody check it out on our website, grangernetwork.com, is you actually get finally that you're never going to get it all done, like ever. And most of us are organized to try to get it all done, and we're never going to get it all done. So we live in the failure of not getting it all done, rather living in the fulfillment of accomplishing outcomes. And we make poor choices. Because we think we, we should be able to get, to it, get done. it all done because good people get it done and we're good people. So we should get it done. And, and when we, we don't, don't get it done. So then we're bad people. And so are the other people who don't get the thing done that they said they would do. I mean, oh my God, your life reduced to tasks. What's that like? You know, the very meaning of your life, right, is kind of absent when you're just doing tasks. How often in your work do you find that somebody has probably dealt with this repeatedly, but how they deal with it is they just change jobs every four or five years to get recruited away. And then the newness of the new role feels meaningful. And then they're back into tasks and they keep trying to cure it by allowing themselves to get recruited to another company. Well, I think that, that I think that that, I don't know, uh, you must have seen that because you asked a very, very, very specific question. <laughs> yes. Is that you, Paul, or is it you just see it around you? <laughs> no, just just yeah. happen to see it around and out in the marketplace that people mm -hmm. tend to be in a position where they might like hop because it's like, oh, it's just a, the boss is the problem because of this or these other team members are the problem because of that or that other department or the organizational change we're going through. And it all kind of lives in this, there's a French term that's resentment, which we know is resentment, but um, it's a deeper phenomenon that's characterized with the blaming of others for things going wrong around us in a sense there's nothing we can do to make things better because it's somebody else's responsibility to do that. Mm -hmm. So my boss doesn't, my spouse mm -hmm. doesn't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my other team members don't pull their weight. Yeah, and the biggest ones that I hear is uh, we're so reactive around here. You know, that certainly does happen a lot. And we often think we can't impact that because, well, we can't say no. Well, no, that's kind of an assessment or something you haven't tried yet or you haven't tried a counter offer. You haven't tried a clear agreement or you haven't tried looking proactively and bringing the information forward before your boss asks for you, right? But so I hear, man, we're so reactive around here. And I also hear busyness. Busyness, I'm going to say, is the number one excuse. Or uh, I say excuse. Um, for most of us, it would be more like an explanation. So the number one explanation that people have for why they cannot be strategic and think from outcomes and act towards outcomes is there's just so much and they're so busy. And, you know, part of that is a function of how much is coming at us. Like the influx today is dramatically different than it was 20 years ago, than it was 10 years ago. It really is different. So we do have to upgrade our, our uh, strategies for dealing with what comes at us, which is why this conversation is so important today, because you literally cannot do everything coming at you. So how do you make decisions? You know, what's your criteria for what you pay attention to and what you don't? Has to be the outcomes that you're oriented around. And if you've lost sight of the outcomes, you're not making good decisions consistent with the future you wanna achieve. You know, and then you also have to have a way of dealing with all the things you're not going to do. And, uh, you know, that's where that whole accounting for your word comes in. 
right? Which we'll probably talk about on a future episode. With your outcomes, without having outcomes in place, you have no idea whether or not your current actions will produce the future that you're after. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's like tasks come at us like, I mean, they just come at us. And so what our filter ends up being by default is what can I get done and when can I get it done? So it's like the payoff we get is feeling productive, but the cost is feeling truly fulfilled. Mm. And the cost is the future, you know, like our ambition, what we see. So we take being productive and getting stuff done in lieu of accomplishing a fulfilling future. And we get bought off on product, like just being, feeling like we're marking things off the list. Well, and I'll kind of tell one on two groups that I see a lot. Probably both of these groups are listeners to the podcast. One is the business owner who gets locked up in the outcome or the task, I should say, because it's not real strategic most of the time, of revenue growth, employee growth, location growth. Mm -hmm. But what they forget is like the whole reason they started a business was to have freedom. Mm. And they stack so many new things on that they literally cost themselves their freedom. Mm -hmm. And that might be personal things that they stack on, not thinking about the maintenance of each of those decisions. Or it could be business things that they continue to layer on, like things are going so well in the primary business, I'm making over a million dollars a year, I'll go ahead and buy another one. When maybe the game to play, if they were centered on their outcomes, would have been, how do I get to where I can work two days a week? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the one that I see in corporate America are the people that chase the next promotion, chase that next share price at quarter end and what they don't do or chase the identity they're building in a community to get the next job opportunity, but they're not even settled on the, the agreement that is, I'm going to work for you and you're going to pay me isn't centered in their own outcome for what they're trying to produce for their family or their life. Yeah, really good. You know, there's a, a cultural, I know for sure it's in the, in North America here, and I'm pretty sure it's in a number of other countries and, and locations around the world, because I certainly coach people in a number of different locations in which I've heard this. But there's this drift of, uh, and I do feel it's fairly global, of more for more sake, more, 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 more. You know, it's, it's just a default of more you know, more fame, more notoriety, more position, more money. And we are chasing that illusion that more will give us more fulfillment. And I can't tell you the number of books and research articles that have been written that more doesn't give us more fulfillment. In fact, it, it creates unfulfillment. You know, that's one of the things that we look to actually intervene with is intervene in this drift of more for more sake. You know, what really is the outcome we're going after? And oftentimes I will ask business owners that, you know, why are you growing? Well, because, you know, we're doing great, make more money. Why? You know, what's fundamentally important to you that has you want to grow? Which, by the way, growing doesn't, bigger doesn't always mean more profitable either, right? Right. So at the Granger Network, you know, why we grow. Our case for growth is actually to intervene in this global drift of more for more sake. And, you know, one of the stands that we take is that when all stakeholders thrive, all stakeholders thrive, profits do rise. So all stakeholders do include shareholders and they win. Shareholders win when all stakeholders win. And that's our stand. So why do we want to grow? Because we feel like that's a conversation that would really make a difference in the global drift of more for more sake. We feel that that's a conversation that will bring more fulfillment to all of us. And by the way, have businesses thrive. So that's why we want to get bigger. It's not because we just want to get bigger for bigger sake. You have an outcome stated. Would it? Mm -hmm. Do you think this would be accurate in me parroting back some of what you said? With no stated outcome, the only action you're likely to take is doing more. Mm. Mm -hmm. More of something, more money, more 
you know, we watch people sometimes do it with their physical fitness. I'm not in good enough shape yet as because they've never stated that me being at this level would be good to care for everything else I care about. Absolutely. You know what? And, and just to bring it back to the beginning of our uh, episode today, you know, what, what are you really going after? What is the outcome and what fundamental care, what, what is it that's so that's really important to you or important to the organization or your team or your department that this outcome is in, you know, service of and, and from there, what activities or tasks or actions do we need to accomplish to get to that outcome? And maybe it's not a meeting. Maybe not everybody is there. You know, maybe it's certain conversations. It might be a list of what we stop. Absolutely. I love that question. You know, what's our stop list? Because we keep doing these things and then we just add, 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 which is also seems to be a national epidemic is yes. adding. Look at the not tax stopping. code. <laughs> right. <laughs> We just add. So, you know, if we stop, I mean, that's that's equally powerful to say, oh, this is the outcome we want. You know, another example from our own company is that we don't say yes to every prospect. We say no mm -hmm. to prospects that we don't see as an alignment with the outcome we're trying to accomplish, the future state we're going after as a company. It's so good. So as our listeners go into their week this week and they're thinking about what they just learned today. Accountability is not about getting more done. Accountability would be about understanding what the outcomes are for yourself and for others. And Paul, I might say it, uh, I might say it just one step further. You know, I think understanding what your outcomes are is like the first step of it. Mm -hmm. But I'd say accountability is really being oriented around outcomes. You know, so it's it's taking actions around the outcomes. It's it's making decisions based on the outcomes. It's having the outcome in mind when you're holding meetings, when you're having conversations, when you're choosing what activities to do and what not to do. So accountability will lie in outcomes. So know yours and know theirs. So we will leave our audience with that today. Accountability is about knowing your outcomes and knowing their outcomes and being in partnership to accomplish those outcomes, leaving aside or leaving a blank palette for what the tasks would be to get that done, including all the tasks you've been doing or your organization has been in the doing of, because there might be a to-do list that comes out of a set of outcomes and there might be a stop doing list yep. that we need yep. to have. Yep. Attach yourself to the outcome. Don't be attached to the tasks. Ooh, that was well, much better said. Attach yourself to the outcome. Don't attach yourself to the task so that every task can be revisited in flight. To use one plain metaphor to end us today, when a flight takes off from Seattle and heads to New York, a lot of people don't realize that thing is off course. It's off its direct flight path 99% of the time. It's adjusting for wind storms, other aircraft, and is literally only on course during its final approach. The rest of the time, it's off the original plan dealing with the environment. We are too. And if all we did was follow the tasks that were originally there and not revisiting the outcome of getting to New York, then all of the things that happen in the environment will throw us off and prevent us from getting to where we want to go. Attach yourself to the outcome. Don't attach yourself to the task. Carrie, thank you again. And to everybody listening, we're hoping that this has been a contribution to your leadership impact. Thank you for tuning into Leadership Impact, the podcast for modern executives who are reinventing leadership within their organizations. Subscribe now at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. And to support you in your leadership impact, we've offered a special course rate to you, our listeners. Just text the word accountability to 555-888 and you'll receive the link. Learn more at grangernetwork.com and join us next week on how to transform your leadership impact with accountability.